Decimal basics. The whole reason that decimals exist are because we need decimals to represent values less than one. Sometimes we want to talk about things that are smaller than one whole, parts of one whole. Some examples of decimals that you see in your everyday life might be if someone takes your temperature, your normal body temperature is, we say, 98.6, or we're going to learn to read it as 98 and 6 tenths of degrees Fahrenheit. And this means that you're, you're between 98 and 99 degrees. You're, uh, point, you're 6 tenths of a way, you're 6 tenths above 98 degrees, so you need part of a degree here. Um, if you've ever heard of someone, or maybe you yourself, have run a 5K race, that's equal to 3 and 1 tenth miles. This means 3 miles and just a little bit more, 1 tenth, 1 piece of a mile. And maybe um, and all the time we're buying something um, with money, and the 79 cents here is showing part of a dollar. This is saying that it's between $5 and $6, 79 hundredths of a dollar. Um, the reason that decimals work is because of our base 10 system, like we heard when we talked about in the place value video. In that um, place value basics video, you heard that as we go to the left, each place value is 10 times the one before it, or times 10 to get to the next place value. So the value of this, um, in the, the 8 in the 1's place is 8, this one is 10 times this one. So this 8 is worth 80 compared to 8 here. Well, going in the opposite direction, the direction that you're moving to for decimals, um, each place value going to the right is one-tenth of the previous place value. So this 1 in the tenths place is going to be one-tenth the value of this. This 1 is one-tenth the value of this 1, and this tenth is one-tenth the value of this place value here. So we're going to use a model to show how that really works, the one-tenth of the one-tenth of the one-tenth idea. In the uh, place value basics video, we use this flat to represent one, um, 100. Now I want you to sort of erase that from your brain momentarily and think of this as the one whole. The reason we would now make this be one whole is that the, uh, the flat is that we could now break it up into smaller pieces and talk about and name those pieces. So for the rest of this video and for the rest of the time where we're talking about um, decimals, let's let this mean one. And I've drawn that here. Let's picture this as the flat. So this is the one whole. If I uh, would take that one whole and chop it into ten pieces, I'm going to make ten even divisions, ten, um, well actually nine slices, but it's going to make ten pieces going down, then each one of those would be one-tenth of the whole. So let's take a look at what that looks like here. So I've made nine equal cuts, I have ten equal parts, and knowing from fractions, what you've learned in the past, this is one-tenth, but it's also one-tenth de the decimal. And the place value directly to the right of the decimal point is called the tenths, and this is representing one-tenth of the whole, and we're going to use a rod now to represent that place value, the tenths place. Notice that it's not tens place, like the place value right here would be in the number. It has a th. Every decimal um, place value after to the behind the decimal has a th on the end. Now, if I were to take this and chop it into ten um, more pieces or take this uh, rod and chop it into 10 pieces, or divide my hundreds grid um, horizontally, then we would now get 100 pieces. All right, so now this one colored in square is a hundredth of the one whole. There are 100 pieces here because there were 10 rods and 10 rows this way. So this is one hundredth. Here's the fraction 100th, and we're going to represent it with one small cube. Remember how I said each place value is one-tenth of the one before it? Well, if you look at the rod here, that is true. This hundredth is one-tenth of the whole rod that was there. So it's one out of ten in that column. Then finally, if we want to talk about the thousandths piece, that's really, really small. To get the thousandths the thousandths, I would have to cut each block, each cube, into a, uh, ten more pieces. 
So I did that for just one, not for all of them. And here is my one cube cut into 10 pieces. I made five slices this way and then cut each one of those in half. And this teeny tiny sliver colored in pink is a thousandth. Thousandths, that's the thousandth place. Here's the fraction one thousandth. And we're gonna use the teeny tiny pieces, the little slices, to represent thousandths. So if we did if we cut each one of those into ten pieces, we would have a thousand tiny little pieces in this one hole. So let's use this information, these place value names, to solve these two uh, questions down here. If the flat equals one, that's this, what decimal is shown? Well, I see two flats to begin with. So I have two holes, all right? And then I have, here are my tenths. I have three tenths. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hundredths. And I have two thousandths. So this decimal is two and 372 thousandths. We're gonna learn on the next slide how to read them in detail. And then a follow-up question, what's the value of the digit in the hundredths place? So the place value, here's the ones place. Right after that, right after the decimal is the tenths place. Here's the hundredths place. Now it's not asking what is the digit, it's asking the value of the digit. That's how much that, that seven is worth. So that seven is worth seven hundredths. Or we would write seven hundredths like this, with a seven in the hundredths place. So here are the directions for reading a decimal, and we're going to use this number here to practice on. Read the whole number to the left of the decimal point if there is one. It says if there is one because sometimes there will be a zero um, in the ones place. But we have a whole number to the left of the decimal, so we're going to read it just like normal. So you're going to cover up your decimal and your um, decimal point, and that number is 1,423. Now, I'm going to read the decimal point as and. So when I get to the decimal, I say and. So, so far, 1,423 and read the digits to the right of the decimal point just as you would read a whole number. So forget about the whole number piece for a minute, this part, and you're going to read these digits just like you would read them normally if you're reading a whole number. So these blue digits after the decimal are say 679. Okay, one more step, I'm not done. Say the name of the place value of the digit in the smallest place. Well, the digit in the smallest place, it's the one furthest to the right, is this nine in the thousandth place. Remember, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So I'm going to end my number by saying thousandths. Let's put it all together. 1,423 and 679 thousandths. So let's practice with a couple down here. This would be 52 and... Then I'm going to read this just like I would a whole number. It's 31. Even though there's that zero there, it's 31, and then this one is in the thousandths place. 52 and 31 thousandths. Here we have 387 and 209 thousandths. And then finally, 27,186 and 4 and then that four is in the tenths place. So you would say, and four tenths. And finally, just like you can with whole numbers, um, we need to realize that we can write a decimal number in different forms. Standard form is just the number form. Word form here, zero and 451 thousandths. And then we could also write it in an expanded form by at writing an addition problem, adding the value of that four plus the value of the five plus the value of the one. So let's use what we've learned about decimals to place some of these numbers on a number line. Notice that my number line goes from zero up to three and then it would continue bigger than that. So I'm gonna first, oh, and one more thing to notice is that each one of the, between zero and one, it has been broken up into this, these spaces in the middle. All right, so if you were thinking about then maybe this as zero dollars and one dollar, Halfway between $0 and $1 would be 50 cents. 
which is this decimal that is 50 hundredths, or we could write it as 5 tenths. So let's just give ourselves a couple of other points to go by. This would be um, halfway between $1 and $2 would be $1.50. Let's go ahead and leave that 50 cents there so we can think about it like money. Halfway between $2 and $3 is $2.50. All right, so let's try placing these decimals on the number line. One and two tenths. Immediately this should tell me it's bigger than one, so it's going to be somewhere between one and two. And then this is five tenths, this is two tenths, so it's going to be less. If I were to think about <coughs> halfway between a dollar and a dollar fifty, this would be a dollar twenty-five. So one and two tenths is going to be a little bit less than that, maybe right there. I'll just draw an arrow. Okay. 75 hundredths, your brain should think about money, that's 75 cents. And 75 cents falls halfway between 50 cents and one dollar. So 75 cents, or 75 hundredths, is going to go there. And notice, we have a special note about this one, any decimal less than one will include a leading zero. So if you have a zero in the ones place, you know that that means that that number is less than one. It falls on the number line between zero and one. All right, 2 and 5 tenths is the same as 2 and 50 hundredths. So that is already actually marked on our number line here. And the reason that that's equal is because this is saying 5 tenths, which are 5 rods. Remember when we showed that with the um, base 10 blocks? So 5 rods are going to be like that. Well, these five rods is this is equal to 50 cubes. Each one of those is 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 hundredths. So if we could count them in tenths, or we could realize that each rod is 10 little pieces, so all together they would add up to 50 hundredths. And then finally, this is 2 and 99 hundredths. Should look a lot like $2.99, which is right below $3 or three holes. So that's going to go right here. It's only one penny less or one hundredth less than three holes.